So we come to Daniel 9, our next ste step in the readings of Daniel, and we come also to a change in the the politics of the time, a change in what is going on in Babylon. It is an unsettling time. Babylon has fallen effectively and have been taken over and we find appointed in place as Darius the Mede. He has been appointed as king over the Babylonians. The Babylonians are no longer the people in charge of their own destination. And this is the place that Daniel works and things are all unsettled and it's all a shift in power and a shift in politics. And so what does Daniel do in these unsettling times? What does he choose to do? He goes to scripture. He goes to read the, um, the passages that they have, the scrolls that they have, and he goes to Jeremiah. He also continues with his patterns of worship. He maintains the times of sacrifice. He maintains worshiping God at set times. And he goes to prayer. He prays, but he doesn't just pray. He prays with fasting and he wears sackcloth and ashes and he, he puts everything into seeking God and finding out the answers to what he's looking for in this unsettled and confusing time for Daniel. And so we come to the prayer. The very prayer, which is quite long, but a prayer of confession. And we come to the opening and Daniel kind of switches between, if you've followed it in your Bibles, it will have Lord in the capital letters all the way through and Lord with a capital L and then small, lowercase. Now, Lord with the capital letters is where Daniel has been showing reverence to God and choosing not to use his name, but is saying Lord. So Lord with a lower L and, and no, a capital L and lower letters is Daniel um, calling to God. It's like him pleading with God and he is coming before God. And so he starts the prayer, Lord, and he's pleading. And in a way he's saying, God, you are here. God is here. And God the Almighty is here. And God the All-Powerful is here. And that knowledge to Daniel impacts on the way he then continues with his prayer. When we start our prayers, do we honestly, like Daniel, think that God is actually here? with us, that we are in his presence. Or maybe we think of God can hear us, but he's actually far off. He's off in the distance. He's away. And so he's, but he can hear us, but we're not actually in his presence. He isn't here. For Daniel, God was here. He stood in the presence of God as he prayed. I wonder if we had that thought. If God was here, it would change the way we prayed. It impacted greatly on Daniel's prayer to know that he was in God's presence, that what he wanted to say to God was so important that actually to bring it to him, he first had to acknowledge who God was. And throughout this prayer, we see that Daniel is saying who God is and who the Israelites are. He's bringing a prayer of confession and it's almost like a school report card, if you like, where it shows in this relationship between God and the Israelites, God has been powerful, God has been faithful, God has been righteous, God has been loving, God has been caring and compassionate. But then we have the Israelites and when you look at what the Israelites have done and for Daniel, it's like, well, the Israelites are weak. The Israelites have been unfaithful. They have not maintained their commitment to the covenant promises that they made. They have been shameful. They have been wayward. They have been distracted. And they have gone their own way. And, and you are presented here with this broken relationship. And, and for us, you might look on and say, actually, it's beyond repair. But actually, it's broken but not beyond repair. It is shattered, but not so far that God would throw it away. It is still a relationship. They are still a relationship there, despite the vast differences between God and the Israelites. The Israelites have a special relationship with God. And for the Israelites, they get to share in God's glory. But for God... 
he is tainted by their shame. Because when the people look on and see the Israelites, they don't see God the Almighty, but they see the Israelites weak and shameful and unfaithful and guilty. But this is what Daniel is coming. And Daniel comes in his prayer and he recognises that actually the Israelites have nothing to bring to God. But he's still going to call on God's character. Now in the um, news this week, there was an article about a certain coffee chain. And um, the coffee chain in question has made a big point about trying to put things right, trying to present coffee that is um, ethically grown, trying to ensure that nobody's treated wrongly, trying to ensure that everybody is treated uh, fairly. And yet one of their employees did something which goes against everything that this coffee chain is trying to achieve. Now the headline in the paper wasn't an employee of, no, the headline in the paper was the coffee chain's name. It is the coffee chain that was tainted by the employee. And in the same way, God had been tainted by the Israelites. God's image of who God was, was affected by everything that the Israelites had chosen to do. And yet God still chose to love them and to maintain this relationship. And so it is on that ground that Daniel comes forward and he is pleading with God. He is pleading to God's character. He's pleading to the God he knows as all-powerful and almighty, but he is pleading to the God of love, the God of compassion, the God of mercy, the God of grace. And God does respond. Now, I want you to imagine that Daniel is wearing sackcloth and he's covered in ashes and he is praying. He is going to be a sorry sight really and I would imagine a highly uncomfortable sight and yet in his prayer this angel flies in and it says an angel came in swift flight now I don't know if Daniel noticed him instantly or whether he was so deep in his thoughts that the angel kind of flew in and then Daniel noticed but what an image to see the contrast between the angel that comes in and Daniel in his confession and prayer as he intercedes, not just for himself, but for all Israelites. You see, the angel has come with a really important message for Daniel. God was indeed there. God was not dependent on the context of the prayer, but God was there from the very beginning of the prayer. And the angel brings that message. He wasn't distant and far off. He was there and he heard and God responded on the L of Lord. God was there. And so what God brings, the message that God brings is one of explaining who he is even more. That he is indeed the God of history. And you can get all kind of tangled up in all the numbers that then come in the next bit with the 70s sevens and the 62 sevens and people have got various theories kind of relating to what power of time that relates to and how it relates to this or how it relates to that i'm not going to go there because actually without the insight of the holy spirit and god revealing what that all means i would only be making assumptions and trying to fit history into something and what god is clearly telling daniel here is that he is the god of history and he ordains when things are going to be. And at the end of it, we get the idea, we get the truth that God ordains everything that is going on in history and that the end is set by God. The time that he is explaining, it is set by God. The great calamity that is to come has an ending and that has been preordained by God. God is the God of history, of the beginning the middle and the end. And that is what Daniel needs to hold on to. But our focus today, I want to bring our focus to verse 23. As soon as, it says, as soon as God responded. In times of trouble, 
in times of despair, in times of anxiety, in times of grief, God is here. If God was far off and distant, would he have been able to respond as soon as? No, God was here. He was with Daniel and he was here. He was not distant. He was not waiting to see how Daniel prayed, whether he used the right combination of words, whether he spent long enough on his knees, whether he was wearing the right amount of ashes and sackcloth. No, God responded as soon as Daniel came to pray. You see, the God of history is faithful, is loving, is gracious, is compassionate, is merciful, is almighty, is all-powerful. He is the God who can take a mighty kingdom of Babylon and shake it to its core and put in its place the Persian kingdom. He is the God who can take the Persian kingdom and wipe it out. He is the God of all history. He is almighty. And Daniel knew that he and his people, the Israelites, were in a relationship with him. And that God was there with him as he prayed. Now, as Christians, we believe that God is with us, that we are in a special relationship with God. But when we pray, do we really believe that God is here? That as we pray, he is stood and that we are in his presence, the almighty and the all-powerful. If we did, would it change the way we prayed? Would it change the way we viewed ourselves and what we asked for? Would it change the way we approached God? Would we come in fear and reverence? Or have we got so used to the idea that God is loving, God is kind? But we kind of forget his power, his majesty and his might. Yes, God is loving, God is kind, God is generous, God is compassionate and he is powerful and he is mighty and he is here. We have a relationship, a loving relationship with a dangerous God. A God who can cause kingdoms to rise and kingdoms to fall. And yet he is a God who is loving and compassionate and faithful. And we come just as Daniel does. And we recognise that we are completely the opposite to God. And it is only through God's grace, God's love and God's mercy that enables us to stand in his presence and to cry out, Lord whether it is in confession or in worship. But we stand in God's presence and he is here. Let's come before God and let us pray. Lord, almighty and powerful, gracious and compassionate, we come weak and confused. We come unfaithful, we come broken, we come longing and we come seeking you. In our own time Lord where it is unsettled, where there is much grief, where there is much pain, where there is much confusion, we come and we ask for you to step in and to bring comfort, to bring love, and to bring hope. Lord, we know that you are almighty, and you are with us. Thank you, God. Amen.